All right, today we are going to paint a couple dogs. We are going to do a corgi because I have a corgi. Her name is Beignet. And then her best friend's name is Summer and she's a golden retriever. So I wanted to paint them together for Valentine's Day, for Galentine's Day. <laughs> and then we're gonna put some conversation hearts underneath. This is, um, I'm just gonna paint at whatever size this paper is. I think it's nine by 12. But if you guys want this to be a card that you give to somebody, make it four by six or five by seven. I mean, you can really do whatever you want. You could even make it really tiny. I am gonna be digitizing this, so I don't really care too much about the size because I can make it whatever size I want once it gets into the computer. The supplies that you're gonna need for this is watercolor paper. I tape my watercolor paper down because once we add water, it can warp. Otherwise, work on a watercolor block. We need watercolor paint, of course. Water cups, I use two water cups, one for cool and one for warm colors. And then I have a variety of brushes today. I have a size six, a size four, a size two, and then this is a size zero, really small brush. You don't have to have all these sizes, but I do recommend having one of these sizes and then definitely a small brush for details and a pencil and an eraser. And we're just gonna get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is sketch. And I want to sketch my little corgi beignet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this into smaller pieces, right, when I sketch it out. Now I know on this piece of paper, beignet is gonna be a lot smaller than her best friend Summer because Summer is a golden retriever and beignet is a short little corgi. So I'm just gonna make a mark here about how tall Beignet is gonna be compared to Summer. So she's probably gonna be about this big. Summer is gonna be about this big. And I'm going to use this photo that I have of her. And the best way to do this is kind of just start with shapes. So her head is almost half the size of her body, it looks like here, a little less. So we'll make her head about this big. And then she has these big triangle ears coming out. And we are working in a loose style today. So this isn't gonna be realistic. Um, of course, we wanna get our sketch, the shapes to look right, but um, we're not gonna worry too much about making this look like realistic dogs. It's just for fun. Right, and it's more of a loose style. So this is her little floof her neck floof, we like to say. And then she has these little paws down here, and this is the bottom of her, or where we wanna place it. So I'm gonna make two ovals. And then her chest floof comes all the way down, it almost touches the floor. Corgis are really funny looking dogs. <laughs> Sometimes I look at her and I'm just like, oh my gosh, you look so funny, but you're so cute. And we're just gonna let her fluff kind of come out to the side. And then she does have a little paw back here, so it's gonna be a little bit higher because of the way she's sitting on the floor. And uh, I think I made her a little too crunched actually. So it's hard to get the proportions right when you are sketching. I'm gonna give her a little more space here. Make those ovals again for the paws. And then that floof coming down and just a little bit like this. She's fast asleep behind me. She got her vaccinations today, so I think she's a little sleepy. She loves the vet. My, everybody loves her, so I think that's why she likes the vet so much. Okay, so we have a general kind of idea of what Benya looks like and then this part always feels more difficult for me getting the eyes right. So try to find at what point is there like an indicator, like the bottom of the ear goes to the eye. And we can see here that this is about where the eye is at, the eyes. And there's about this much space in between. So just kind of use those as your marker. Beignet has these really cute, um, like almond shaped eyes. They're gonna look kind of weird right now because they're not colored painted yet. 
and then come down here and we have this big nose and she has a big smile I know these eyes look really creepy right now but just hang on hang with me and then she has her little I'm gonna make her tongue come all the way out I don't know why her eyes look so creepy to me. They won't look creepy once we paint, but they do look really creepy. Maybe they're too big. Oh, I think they're too big. Okay. <laughs> and then I just want to put her markings in here so we know kind of where to put the brown when we get started. And okay, so we have a general sketch of her. I'm just gonna have some brown coming in here and we can reference this when we get started. And I also want to put, I'm putting some kind of conversation hearts down here. So we're just going to erase and put some hearts. Do you guys remember those, those candy conversation hearts? They're so iconic of uh, Valentine's Day. We'll put another one right here. Okay. Benny is looking real creepy to me right now, but I think that we can make her look cute. <laughs> All right. Now we need to draw Summer, and Summer is a golden retriever. So I actually, I don't have a picture of Summer, so I just pulled this one off of the internet. And same thing, we're going to work with shapes. So I think Beignet would probably be about up to here on summer. And we want to make sure we reflect that in the photo. So just start with shapes. It's kind of like this oval shape. And then <laughs> big head. And we're going to come out here with these ears. And this is my first time painting this, you guys. So I'm right there with you. <laughs> and we have very pronounced little muzzle right here with a big smile. Big tongue hanging out and a big old nose. And then make sure you get the little nostrils in there. Corgis are nostrils are a little bit smaller. But. And then the golden retriever has almost like smiling eyes. And they are further apart. Kind of like a little teardrop shape. And we have this line coming down here. And that's where his chin, or her chin kind of ends. And then just all this gorgeous fluff. <laughs> and we'll draw the little legs coming down. And you can hide, if you don't want to paint the paws, you can kind of hide it. I kind of want to make her tail coming up. Eh, no. Okay, so we have our dogs all sketched out. I'm going to add, I think I'm gonna move this heart a little bit so it's covering up her paws. All right, hearts, maybe one more over here. Okay. Now, since we are painting in a loose style, you want to erase a little bit so you don't have have the pencil lines looking too dark, especially because both of these dogs are kind of lighter in color. We don't want to see the pencil marks too much. Okay, now we're going to mix up our colors and Corgi's, or at least my Corgi, she is a sable and they're kind of a golden brown color. So we're gonna mix up those colors, golden brown, black, 
black. We're definitely gonna need some black here. And then we'll use the bright colors when we do the little hearts. But for now, my biggest concern is just kind of getting a golden color going. And you can pull up a picture of a golden retriever and a corgi yourself so you have the reference and you can blend your colors according to that. And if you're feeling like this color is just too bright, use the opposite of the color. So the opposite here would be, I would say, a blue, and that can help mute down the color. See, it adds kind of like a green to it. Another option is you can add black, but I found, find that adding the opposite color keeps your color looking good. So it's not like really murky. When you add black, it kind of tends to get a little more murky. That's a little redder than I wanted. Okay, I think that's good for the golden. And we're gonna go in and just, I have my size six brush. Just lightly bring in, paint the body. You can almost just paint it all this color, except I wouldn't paint the tongue just because we wanna keep the tongue pink. But you can paint over the eyes because we're gonna use black to come back and the nose you can paint over as well. So I'm just, I have lots of water on my brush. And now that I see this, we are going to be able to see the pencil line through, but next time, or if you haven't started painting yet, erase the pencil lines. It's best to do it as light as possible. Just painting here covering whole dog and because we're working in a loose style we don't have to wait until everything is completely dry if we wanted to do a more realistic style we would want to wait until each layer was completely dry but since we're kind of or since we are using a more fluid style we don't have to worry about that too much now I am going to go in and maybe make some darker spots where you see darker spots in the photo. So there would be like some shadows right here, some shadows probably down here. Shadows back here. And I know it looks funky right now, but don't worry about that. Kind of coming in here. That's the thing with watercolor is it usually starts out being like, what the heck? I can't tell you how many pet portraits I do. I do my pet portraits in a realistic style, but when I'm doing them, I always go through this phase where I wanna quit because I'm just, it looks like the ugliest thing ever to me. And they always turn out looking good. So it's just time. It just takes some time and you have to be able to kind of visualize what it's gonna look like. So I wanna wait until this is a little more dry over here because if I go and start to paint the corgi, what's gonna happen is it's going to bleed really bad. And I do want the corgi to look slightly different in her shade. So I am going to make her a little more brown, at least her brown spots. The other ones, she will be white too. And adding a little more red and I can start over here. And I have a lot of paint on my brush, so I just wiped it off a little bit. Started painting. And I'm making small lines so you can see, she has, if you can see this, how the fluff comes down. We wanna make sure to keep that look. It's just making little lines. And then she has some brown on this paw over here. and all around her face. Corgis have very fox-like features. So foxes have the brown on their faces. 
You have those ears, big old ears. And we can kind of just blend this because we're working in a loose style. Kind of almost like a little bandit um, around the eyes. <laughs> All right, I'm okay with getting close over here even if it bleeds a little bit, we're okay. And I do wanna add a little darkness over here. Okay, and then we got some up here too. All right, and if you want, you can add some water and kind of just let it bleed a little bit. Just a little bit, not too much because we still want her to look white in these areas. And then her little paws are pretty white, but we'll paint them a little bit with this other color. Okay, oh, let me blend in a little water here. Oops. And we can actually go up and put in some of the details. This is dry enough that we can do that. So I'm getting a little bit of black on my smallest brush, my size zero brush. And I'm just going to come in here and draw the eyes. Now, if you have a white gel pen or white paint, it's really cute to put just a little dot in there to give the eyes that, you know how dogs always have that really bright little dot of white in their eyes. Just makes them come alive. And we're not worrying about this being perfect. It can bleed a little. And we're just painting his little lips here. This is why your sketch is so important because it's telling you where to go as you paint this. And then he has these black lips that come all the way down. And you can put a couple little dots here for your whiskers and you can see it's bleeding and that's okay. We don't want it to bleed much more than this. So if it is bleeding much more than this, it probably means that you, your paint is too wet. So we're gonna just wait until it dries more if it bleeds more than that. We're going to take a darker shade of this color and we're just going to come in where the ears were to make these little shadows. And again, if it's bleeding too much, just wait. I'm gonna make just small lines on the ears because golden retrievers have that really beautiful fur. Make a little, just little teeny marks up here for fluff. And I'm gonna accentuate these guys right here. And do the same thing down here. And it's bleeding a lot because it's still pretty wet. And as you can see, the paper is kind of buckled. That is the reason why we really have to tape our paper down. Otherwise, it's like impossible to work with. Now we're gonna go back to the corgi and put in the details for the eyes. And I'm gonna leave a little spot of white. I'm just painting around it. almond shape eyes mischievous looks very mischievous <laughs> and then the little nose almost like a heart nose when Benya was a puppy she had a little heart nose and it was the cutest thing ever and again making a black line where the muzzle is the mouth up so it's up and it kind of curves in. So, and Benny has these little tiny eyebrows right here. So I'm just gonna do a little, looks kind of funny. <laughs> 
And if you don't like something, which I actually don't like those, I'm just gonna come in here with a paper towel and blot it and I can remove them. I think her nose needs to be a little bigger. And she also has kind of like this black mark right here. So I'm just doing tiny little lines. I want to paint her tongue and her tongue is pink. So I have a pink color right over here. Let's bring out her tongue. And just add a lot of water. And I do want to put a little bit of detail here, so I'm going to grab that brown, but mix it with a little bit of black. It's very, very light. And because I have this tiny brush, I'm just coming in and making teeny, tiny lines. And this is just going to give a little more detail so you can kind of see where some of the details are. This does not look like beignet, but it's cute corgi. <laughs> it's funny because when you paint animals a lot, you notice that, I'm just gonna darken up some areas. There are very distinct features to most, well, to all animals. And as an artist, when you're painting people's pets, you have to be able to find that. So I ask for multiple photos when I do pet portraits because it helps me to find those unique details that their pet has. A lot of times, sometimes you'll get a photo. It's just like a person. Sometimes people look totally different in their photos from one photo to a next to the next. So I like to have um, more than one so I can find the details in their dog that's unique. Especially purebred animals because they all, they do look different, but they have a lot of the same features. So um, I like to get different, just see the different way that they look. Okay, so our little golden retriever Summer up here needs some help. <laughs> She needs her pink tongue. And just painting this in. I am putting more water. We don't want anything to be too dark because we're doing that looser style. And then I definitely want to add some details in her fur because Goldens have that like, those lines kind of almost curly. So I'm just going in here with my small brush and making some little lines. And she what, or there is a shadow that's cast right here. It's important to consider shadows, especially, I mean, anytime you're painting, but when you're doing a loose style, you do want to incorporate the shadows because you want there to be a distinguishable kind of feature between here like the head and the chest paint the legs and here obviously i'm just going to blend these with some water i'm going to get a bigger brush here obviously there's going to be more shadow because it's underneath her chest and in between her legs so there would definitely be more shadows i'm just going to blend this a little more and i think we need some more color up here in the face and in the ears. Make a shadow here. This is her hind leg and it's behind her front paw. Definitely be darker. And once this gets a little more dry, I'm gonna come back in here because it needs a little more detail. Because Beignet has a lot of detail and that's not blurry and this is really blurry. I'm gonna paint just a little bit more black in here. Maybe paint a line down the tongue. And we are gonna paint the hearts while summer dries, we're gonna paint these little hearts. And since they're conversation hearts, we wanna make um, like little sayings on them. 
So grab a pink and we're just gonna paint these guys. I'm using Opera Rose. It's one of my favorite watercolor colors. It's really bright pink. I'm a fan of pink. Okay, and then what other colors? Oh, the Conversation Hearts always have a yellow one. And you can paint whatever kind of dogs you want. If you want to paint your dog, feel free to. I just use these two because I have lots of pictures of Beignet. <laughs> this heart I'm gonna make blue. Kind of a, almost like a baby sky blue. And we're just painting it. I'm just adding water to my paint and I'm just painting the whole thing like normal. I'm not doing a wet and dry technique or anything like that. And then our last heart will be purple. And actually get a lot of water because we want this to be a light purple. Do you guys like Valentine's Day? Let me know in the comments. I used to hate it but I love it now. I, I loved it when I was little and then I went to high school and like my early 20s and I hated it and now I love it again. I just love how it's so cliche and all the decorations. I don't know why, I just, I love all the pink <laughs> and the cheesy decorations. Plus my husband and I always have fun and we, we do something like themed. I think this year we're going to do Scottish because we went to Scotland in 2019 and um, we just loved it. So I think we're going to cook like a Scottish meal and have whiskey and stuff. So I'm just adding some more shadows here to good old summer up here. And let's see if this is dry. Okay, so we can go back in here and just fix up her her details a little bit, make her eyes a little more black. <laughs> they have the sweetest eyes. <laughs> and then her nose. And come in here, make her a little smile. There we go. It's looking a lot better. A little bottom lip. Some little dots for her whiskers. It was so cute when Benye was a puppy. Summer was a puppy at the same time and she was so little and she got bigger and bigger every class but Benye didn't get much bigger. So it's funny to see them together now because they're so different in size. All right, um, let's add a little tiny bit more pink to Summer's tongue just because technically there would be a shadow right here. We'll do the same for Beignet. And I'm pretty happy with the way our dogs are looking. And we wanna write in our conversation hearts. So grab a color that's darker. I would say I'm gonna mix up kind of like a purpley blue color. Let's see what I got it's over here. That's actually, you know what? Let's do bright red. I think that would look cool. All right, and let's think about things that dogs would say. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm going to write be mine for one of them because that's just normal stuff that you would see on here. And make sure that this is dry enough, otherwise, it's going to be bleeding and it's not gonna look that good. So you can wait a little bit longer. Mine is almost dry. I mean, I see it bleeding a little bit, but it's not too bad. Um, let's put, so for this one, I'm gonna say boops, cause Beignet boops us with her nose all the time. How about boop me? There we go. And we'll 
good part. Gosh, I should have thought of good puns before I started this video. Let's just say like rough, rough. If you guys think of good sayings in the comments, will you tell me? <laughs> I'm sorry, these are so lame. <laughs> I can't put like bone on here, you know, cause people with dirty minds. <laughs> rough, rough, boot me, be mine, text me. <laughs> How about let's play fetch? Let's play All right, and oh, Benny's paws need a little love over here. So let's grab that brown gray color. I'm just gonna make little like C curves for her paws and maybe a little indication that it's coming down right there and we can do little lines for that floof. And I think we're good. Uh, another thing you could do right here is just add some kind of shadow because technically, but maybe add a little black to it because then it doesn't look like Benny's fur or the Corgi's fur, but it just shows that there's like something like she's in the front. So she would cause a shadow here. All right. I hope you guys like this tutorial. Let me know if you liked it in the comments below and also tag me on Instagram at lavender and C. I'd love to see what you created. Thanks for watching.